Good morning, First Church and friends. This is Carolee Owens, your Minister of Music. I hope you are enjoying the crazy, hazy, lazy days of summer as much as I am. We have been blessed to not have blazing hot days yet, but I'm sure they are coming. I hope you have been able to see your loved ones and meet new friends. All of these things are blessings from God and part of his wonderful words of life. Our composer today, Philip Bliss, dedicated his life to sharing the gospel through song. He could have been financially secure, but instead gave his royalties from songwriting to evangelical work. The publication, Gospel Songs, allowed him to give away $30,000, a fortune in the 1800s. Philip Bliss died tragically at the age of 38 in a fiery train wreck as he was on his way to Chicago to sing for evangelistic services. I am reading from Then Sings My Soul by Robert J. Morgan. Philip Bliss was born in Pennsylvania on July 9, 1838, and fell in love with music in childhood when he heard a neighbor's piano. As a teen, he nurtured his musical interests in the sawmills and lumber camps where he worked. At age 22, Bliss, newly married, became an itinerant music teacher, traveling from town to town on horseback, teaching music and writing songs. Four years later, Bliss moved his family to Chicago, where he hoped to break into music publishing. One night, he and his wife Lucy attended a rally in which D.L. Moody spoke, and a friendship quickly formed. Moody urged Bliss to give up his business, drop everything, and sing the gospel. Philip and Lucy were hesitant. I am willing that Mr. Bliss should do anything that we can be. Sure is the God's, sure is the Lord's will, said Lucy. And I can trust the Lord to provide for us, but I don't want him to take a step simply on Mr. Moody's will. Finally, Moody, never one to mince words, wrote bluntly, you have not faith. If you haven't faith of your own on this matter, start out on my faith, launch out, into the deep. Horatio Spafford, whose four daughters perished in the sinking of the Villa de Habra, urged Philip to consider Moody's appeal. Bliss would later write the music to Spafford's hymn, It Is Well. Still, Philip wavered. Shortly afterward, Bliss led the singing at an evangelistic effort in Waukegan, Illinois, where Major Daniel Whittle was preaching. Bliss sang the hymn, almost persuaded, and every word seemed filled with power. The next afternoon, Bliss and Whittle gathered with the pastor at the church and spent several hours in prayer. There, Bliss made a formal surrender of everything to the Lord. He gave up his business and his writing of secular music. As Whittle later recalled, gave up everything and in a simple childlike trusting prayer, placed himself with any talent, any power God had given him at the disposal of the Lord for any use he could make of him in the spreading of his gospel. Philip Bliss spent the rest of his short life doing exactly what his song proclaims, sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for reminding us of your wonderful words of life every time we sing your praises. We are grateful for your offer of pardon and peace to all and that we are sanctified through the grace you freely give to all. Teach us faith and duty so others may be brought into your loving care. May your wonderful words of life echo in our thoughts and flow freely from our hearts. In Jesus' most holy name I pray, amen. I hope you can join us this Sunday online or in person. You will be blessed to hear Donna Baton sing wonderful words of life and children of God. Take care and have a wonderful weekend.